What's up everyone? Today I want to talk about one of the best and most fun Necromancer leveling builds I've tried in Season 1, and that is the Blight Summoner Necromancer. There are loads of builds out there recommending Bone Spear and sacrificing all your minions, but I really wanted to make a full summoner for this season, and it is so fun. The build requires no uniques, it's really easy to get going from the start, most aspects are either in the codex or come as part of the seasonal journey, and it uses hearts which are really easy to obtain. I'm still using this in tier 3 against monsters 5 levels above me, and it is so powerful. But let's go over it. The playstyle revolves around having a massive swarm of minions and doing huge damage with both minions and damage over time. We move from pack to pack, making our minions stronger, putting down blights, and while everything around us just passively melts. We use the new sacrilegious heart that came out in season one. This automatically uses a nearby corpse every second. That means that it automatically summons minions whenever they die, both uh, warriors and mages. It automatically uses corpse explosion, which puts down a massive AOE and dot, and it uses tendrils to group up everything together. That means three skills in our hotbar are just used automatically. So what you have to do is move from pack to pack, applying blight to do damage over time to all the different mobs. This is the most necromancer I've ever felt. You can spend more time focusing on applying damage over times and buffing your minions and empowering them than worrying about the manual side of resummoning, messing around with the corpses, it just feels amazing. This is the, the most fun I've ever had on Necromancer and it gets stronger and stronger the more you level up. The more of your Book of the Dead you unlock, the more of your aspects you get, the better it feels. So let's go over everything you need to know to make this Necromancer leveling build. Okay, let's talk about the aspects. I have tried to make this build need zero uniques and to need as, as many aspects that come from the Codex as possible. So with this, you won't need to worry about finding legendaries, extracting them, imprinting them on your gear. I've tried to make this purely with codex aspects. There are a couple that are really good if you find them that I will mention, but everything I think pretty much here is from the codex or is a codexable ability. So I'll start by just going over all of the ones you get from the codex or that you don't need to hunt down legendary aspects for. And then I'll talk about a few, like I've got the chess piece, which is, is a really good one that comes from a legendary aspects that I got lucky and found and around like level 40 and imprinted it on. So yeah, I'll talk through those as well. But first, let's go through the codex one, starting with the, with the gloves. Grasping vines, increase crit strike chance when you use corpse tendrils for six seconds and then increases damage to enemies damaged by corpse tendrils. Corpse tendrils will be going off constantly all the time. The way I set up my bar is I use raise skeleton first. So the first thing it does is raise the skeleton. If no skeletons need raising, it will do a corpse tendril and then corpse explosion. So we'll constantly have corpse tendrils going off. So grasping vines is, is amazing. On the weapon, I really like unyielding commander. This is so good. So while army of the dead is active, your minions gain a hundred and well, it's between 140 and 200% attack speed and take 180% reduced damage. So this is doubled on a two handed weapon. So if you were to have it on another piece of gear, it would be say 70% attack speed and 90% reduced damage. But on a weapon, 152% attack speed, they go crazy. Get a bunch of elites together, get up on a boss, and the attack speed is just so, so, so fun. It it, it, it makes the build feel amazing. Um, then I have the Blighted. The, uh, you deal increased damage for six seconds after the Shadow Blight key passive damage damages enemies 10 times. Really, really good, really powerful, really helps you pop off, really good damage. Then I've got the reanimation aspect. Your skeletons get increased damage while alive, up to 32% after 10 seconds. So again, the more we can do to keep them alive, you know, this reduces their damage. Uh, this reduces their damage as well. The more we can keep them alive, the more damage they do. So it's a win-win. And then I have this one, restore a, restore your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy. Every time we blight, we slow. That's a crowd control. So you're constantly going to be regaining your essence and then you can do more blights. So it's a win-win. Yeah, they're, they're some of the really, really good ones that I've found so far that work really well. I've, I've moved a few in and out. The only other ones I'd be looking for in the codex is the aspect of decay. That's a really, really nice one. So if you go on the seasonal journey, I think it's here. The aspect of decay, each time the shadow blight passive damages enemies, increases the next shadow blight's damage within 10 seconds by 20%, stacking up to five times. This is a really, really nice one. Okay, so that covers all of the, the easy to get aspects, the ones that you can just go to the dungeon, get the aspects, put it on your gear whenever you want. You upgrade your chest piece, you can just put the aspect straight back on. This build does not require these aspects, but it's nice that if you ever have the resources, you ever want them back on a piece of gear, you can just get them and you don't have to sit looking for legendary aspects for a long time. However, there are some that come from legendary aspects that are really powerful. So I'll go over those now because if you find them, they're really good to put on. So first up, I would go for this, the, the Blood Getter. This, uh, your maximum number of skeletal warriors is increased by two. This is really good. So we're, we're ramping up our minions damage. We're ramping up our minions um, defenses. 
attack speed. So having this is is amazing. You, two extra minions, two extra people dealing damage. There's a skeletal mage version of this. It's called the, the Vicious Aspect. I'd go for that as well. And that gives you two extra mages. Really, really good. Definitely, if you find those, add them onto your build and you'll have a ton of fun. Some other ones I'd go for is the Cardaverous. This is where if you consume a corpse, the next core skill does more damage. So that's really useful, the Cardaverous aspect. Um, the frenzy aspect of the Frenzy Dead, this increases your minion's attack speed. That's really good. There are three that I would maybe be looking for. Four, maybe? It, that I'd be looking for if you find them. But yeah, I wouldn't stress it. That's that's it. The gear's really easy on this build. Okay, and then onto the hearts, the, the big the big seasonal feature that we all, we're all excited for, right? Okay, so the, the, the heart you want, the key heart is this one. Um, walking near a corpse automatically activates an equipped corpse skill every second, dealing 32%, dealing percent of damage reduced. Uh, so this, as the, the level of the heart goes higher, the damage the, the damage you lose goes down. So that's really good. But this is the, the one that makes all your summons raise automatically, the corpse tendrils, corpse explosions, just to go off randomly. It's called the Sacrilegious Heart. You can get it early. You can go do malignant tunnels for it. You can roll for it. It's, it's the number one thing you want on this build. Let's go over the skill tree. I think it's going to be really important to talk through why certain things are taken here and the reasonings for certain abilities over others and other options you might want to choose. But... Also, I'll link down below a, a written up tree of where you can take your points point by point if you want to follow it at a later, a later time. But for now, let's talk through it. Starting with the basic one, I think it's really good to take Reap. A lot of people are loving uh, Bone Splinters, but I think Reap is better. It does a damage reduction on hit. It's a frontal cleave, so you're there with your, with your minions. And then once you take Enhanced, if an enemy hit dies within two seconds, you gain 30% attack speed. That's amazing. Having a fast minion build is really important because you want to ramp things up faster. Then you want to take this. This is the main reason for taking this. Reap forms a corpse under the first enemy hit. Three of our abilities rely on corpses on the ground. It relies on resummoning our minions from corpses, corpse tendrils and corpse explosions. So this is hands down. This might do more damage, but this is hands down the reason to take this. And I think it's really important. Moving down, I would put one point into Blight, Unleash a Blight, which leaves behind a defiled area, dealing damage over six seconds. So it does an initial hit of damage and then leaves a big damage over time. You want your entire screen to be blighted. You want the whole screen to just be covered in blights. That's that's the goal. You don't have much to do on this minion build other than cast blight and you want it to be covered. So then you enhance it, blight slows enemies by 25%. A lot of people didn't think slow was a CC at first, but slow is a crowd control. So later on, we're gonna take lots of things that give us bonuses when we have crowd control and this is a crowd control. So everything will be crowd controlled all the time, which is really good. And then you take Supernatural, you and your minions deal 15% increased damage to enemies within Blight. Everyone will be in Blight all the time. So I would go like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'd start by branching both these out and then I would dump the rest of your points in here to five out of five it once you've got to Supernatural. And then I would head down here and I would take the corpse, corpse Explosion. This is another one of your big damages. So I'd put a point here and then I branch out, the radius increased by 15% and branch again, becomes a darkness skill. Instead of exploding, releases a Vile Miasma, dealing damage, shadow damage over six seconds. So you can see now we've got damage over time from our Bly and damage over time from this, which the whole screen is just going to be doing huge AoE damage all the time, which is so good for clearing big packs of mobs. And then I would, uh, then I would three out of three this, increase the damage and life of your skeletal warriors. Increasing the life means you don't have to resummon them as much and increasing the damage obviously increases your, your damage significantly. That's 45%. Then I would five out of five this. So that would be the next thing I do. I've got one point from, from gear, but yeah, I'd five out of five this next. Then I would go down to here and five out of five this. Increases the damage and life of your skeletal, uh, three out of three, sorry, increases the damage and life of your skeletal mages. So now we've buffed our, our skeletal warriors and our skeletal mages. Okay, then I would start getting some of the passives. So I'd get this one, consuming a corpse, generate six essence. And then I would three out of three this one. You deal 9% increased damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse. Every second a corpse gets consumed. So this is amazing so yeah I'd, I'd three out of three that three out of three that and then you've got all the passives and this is kind of finished right and then i would go down and i would get the corpse tendrils one point here i've got one from gear but you only one point this and then you do this enemies are in the range of corpse tendrils are slowed by 50 percent before being pulled that's another instance of using a slow enemies damaged by corpse tendrils are made vulnerable so now you can see here everything on the screen should be slowed and vulnerable which is really really good for ramping up your damage okay then we head down to the bottom and we uh we get the ultimate so i really like army of the dead for this over seven seconds skeletons emerge and just run at the enemies and blow up it looks amazing it feels amazing it's really really powerful then i would take this prime army of the dead volatile skeletons explode they have a 15 percent chance to leave behind a corpse this again is really good there may be people in the comments that say we take too much um, leave a corpse abilities and I would I would maybe agree but when it gets to big fights 
you can also press your buttons on your skill bar. So let's say you have like 15 to 20 corpses on the screen all around you and there's a boss or there's a big pack of elites. You don't have to just wait every second. You can just go and just explosion, explosion, explosion. You can still have that agency to do it yourself. So having too many is, is not really a bad thing. And while your blight, when you run out of mana and your blight is down, it's more beneficial to sit there blowing up the corpses than it is to sit there reaping. So, you know, I, I don't think there's ever too much. And then I'll take Supreme Army of the Dead, also raises your Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Majors. So if you're on a, a boss and he does a big cleave and destroys all your minions, rather than using all the corpses around him to resummon, you can just cast Army of the Dead. Again, this can be used at really key points to just get that extra damage against big packs of elites and then resummon as well. So it's, it's really, really useful. Then you want to make sure you get the, uh, the key passive when you can. Shadow damage inflicts enemies with Shadow Blight for two seconds. You and your minions deal 10% damage to, to enemies with Shadow Blight. This is really powerful, and every 10th time an enemy receives it, they take an additional damage. So this is really, really powerful, and there's certain things on the aspects that empower this as well. So yeah, I think this is the best one. I've tried a couple of the others, but this always feels like the best one. Then you want to go up and get the rest of the passives. So up here, I would grab... Was it this one we didn't take yet? Yeah. Your max essence increased by three, and then... Your core skills cost 3% more essence, but deal 5% increased damage. By this point, you don't have as much of an essence problem. So this is worth taking now. And then I'd go for the purple ones. So it's all about your shadow damage. Damage to enemies with darkness skills increases movement speed by 15%. Huge, it's a very fast build. Then gloom, damage. Uh, when you damage enemies with darkness, they take increased shadow damage from you and your minions. And then finally, it all comes together. Darkness skills deal 9% damage to enemies who are slowed. And extra if they're stunned or immobilized. But everything is slowed all the time. If you find yourself running a very lucky hit heavy build, this is 100% worth it because they're stunned. So this procs for extra. However, as you're leveling, I don't find myself like going to the enchanter and re-rolling gear or specifically looking. And that's why I don't really talk too much about specific stats on leveling gear because you just take the thing that's the strongest normally. And in, in three levels, you've got a better one. So rather than worry about the stats, I don't really worry about lucky hits. I don't try and take too much lucky hit. But yeah, if you want this and you, you know, you're trying to still play this 50 plus, you might find you've got loads of lucky here. This is a really good one to take. Then I would go and get these, these blue ones. So I take inspiring leader so that I could get into here. And then I put three points here. Your minions cannot lose more than 30% of their max life from a single damage instance. This stops them being like one shot by a boss or just absolutely dominated by a big explosion. It's really useful to stop them just crumbling all around you in one hit. Then I would grab this. Your minions deal 20% increased damage while you're close to them. So the reason we like this is when you're on a boss, you're going to run out of mana a lot and you can get in and you can you can cast Reap because there's not going to be that many corpses. So while you're there, your minions are doing more damage. I'm tempted to drop a point somewhere and put an extra point into this, but I'm still not sure because it feels so good. I'm still not sure what I would drop. Yeah, if, if there's something you don't like, I'd max this because it is good. You're not always near them, but when you are, 10% more damage is good. But yeah, that's, that's the build. I don't think I've missed anything. Maybe I have. I think that's everything. Again, I'll link it down point by point of where I would place, you know, level five, place it here, level six, place it here. But yeah, this is, this is the board. Okay, onto the Book of the Dead. This is the, the big necromancer specific. And what you see in, what, you, what, what I'm seeing a lot is a lot of people just sacrifice all their minions. And I just really like minions. So I've tried to find the best things for the minion playstyle. On the warriors, I really like Reaper. It's like a slower, big, heavy hit in damage. And this one here is the main reason to take it. Reapers have a 15% chance to carve the flesh off an enemy forming a corpse. More corpses more means more minions getting raised, means more corpse tendrils, means more corpse explosion. It's fantastic. It's, it's a win-win. It's high damage plus corpses, which means more damage, more AoEs, more damage over times. Really, really cool ability. Then for Skeletal Majors. I like Shadow because we're, we're playing on Shadow Damage. So in the skill tree, we have that little purple section, which is all about Shadow Damage. So having Shadow Majors feels even better. So yeah, what, what better way to get more Shadow Damage than have Shadow Majors and take this ability here that Shadow Majors fire an additional Shadow Ball every fourth attack. So even more Shadow Damage. I, I think you, you can't ever have too much. It's really good. It stacks up the, 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 the Shadow uh, percentages and the procs. It's really powerful. I don't think... I would take stun. There is a, a point where stun triggers another move in the skill tree, but I think this still wins over. I've tried them both and I still think this is the best. For the golem, I, I have tried and tried to make golem work in this build. I don't know what it is with golem, but I just can't get into it. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't feel the speed. I don't feel the, the usefulness of having a golem up in this build. I've tried every version of this and uh, as much as I wanted to have it, 
you can't you can't improve on that. I think 10% increased attack speed just wins out over all of the things the golem does. If I was going to take this, uh, put it in this build, I would take the iron golem because it can stun and that's just that's just useful to, to proc the other abilities that rely on CC and stun. And yeah, I'd, I'd probably go for this one here. Slamming also makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds. So if I was, if I was going to take the golem, I would go for iron and vulnerable damage, but I, I think this is better. Um, yeah, that, that's my that's my opinion. But yeah, that's the video. That's the build. The 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 blight summoner necromancer build. That's it. That's everything. Um, I, this is a leveling build, so you know you just, you just put your points in, get some some gear, preferably codex, put them in, and away you go. I don't want to get too in depth on paragon boards, min maxed of what you should reroll at the enchanter because uh, your gear gets replaced so much while you're leveling. If you want to see a full end game beefed out video, let me know. And I'll, I'll, I'll get on it if, if people really want to see it. And I'll have a look what else is like really good at endgame to, to work on that for Necromancer. I do want to get these build videos out so much faster. Like there's loads of Druid builds I want to make, loads of Necromancer builds I want to make. But yeah, Blizzard haven't made it easier to make, to, to, to make, to switch your builds and to have fun and make new builds and videos. They've, they're not, they've not made it easy. And you know, I've already got a high level Druid and Necromancer and then you've got to start again. Leveling speed's quite slow, um, quite tedious. And then, you know, you've got to refarm all your aspects. You've got to refine your uniques for builds and legendaries and... There's no loadouts and you've got to re-get re all the gear to imprint your and get gold again. It's, it's very, very long, but they're coming. They're only a few days in. The builds are coming, but there's just a lot of like grinding to do just to get to this point. So they're coming and thank you for your patience. Subscribe if you want to see all the builds. They're on their way. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.